heart, our Father in heaven, speak to us as we listen in Jesus' name. We pray. Amen. Amen. Stolen water in the tent. We know the story of Numbers chapter 25 as the children of Israel were at the shore of River Jordan. Up yonder was the promised land. But Moses was very busy with Jonathan, uh, with Joshua to make sure that the land was going to be demarcated well and there, were no, and there was no going to be confusion. So I want to talk about two things at, in one. Actually, I want to talk about courtship and then I will, I will inject or I will bring on board the stealing because this stealing happens during courtship. Sure. Now, what is courtship? It's a sincere and honest effort of two, I can say two adults that are seeking to find out if it is God's will to be married. So it is not one person. It is two, I guess, adults who are mature and who are sincerely and honestly seeking to find out if it is God's will for the two of them to be joined in a holy matrimony. Amen. So, important step in life. Great care should be taken by Christian youth in the formation of friendship. You know, it's out of friendship that you can identify some Rebecca, some Flora, and then start courting. courting. So, and in the choice of companions. You should weigh every sentiment and watch every development of character in the one with whom you think to link your life destiny. Actually, the step you are about to take is one of the most important in your life and should not be taken hastily. In fact, the last statement said, while you may laugh, do not laugh blindly. Mm -hmm. By the way, there is this slogan that love is blind. No, love is not blind. <laughs> love has got eyes. It is infatuation which is blind. We should change that English. It should be infatuation is blind. But love is not blind. It has got seven eyes. The Spirit sure. of God will help you to see. Love has got seven eyes. But infatuation has no eyes. It is blind. Number two, it has no ears. It doesn't listen to counsel from God. Now, some of the questions you need to ask yourself. That union, will it help you heavenward? Will it increase the love for God? Will it enlarge your sphere of usefulness in the society? And if after evaluating those principles above, you are convinced that the reflections present no negative or drawback, then you go ahead and court that sister. Vital factors in the choice. Those who are contemplating marriage, I don't know whether Zoya is contemplating. I don't know whether Kevin is contemplating. I don't know whether Rogers. No, Rogers, you still look young. You don't need to contemplate. You need to contemplate about education. <laughs> sure, sure. <laughs> I don't know about Flora. Flora, she looks like a young flower. <laughs> but anyway, I don't know. I, I'm yet to know you people. You never know. Now, <laughs> I, you never know. Flora is a flower. It's ready, right, ready to be picked by a bee. Where are the bees to hover over the flower? You need bees which are mature to leave the beehive and go and hover over our flower. And if they are allowed to land, they can land and tap nectar, which is grooming the flower before you take it to your house. Sure. Now, and upon the character of the home depends the condition of the society. The weight of each family's influence will tell in the upward or downward scale. Ministry of Healing 357, paragraph 1. Another thing you, you consider is the choice of a life companion should be, as, should be such as best to secure physical, mental, and spiritual well-being for parents and for their children. Both parents and children to bless their fellow men and to honor their creator. Now, before assuming this responsibility of marriage, young men and young women should have such an experience in practical life as will prepare them for its duties and its burdens. By the way, it has a lot of duties and burdens. It is not a bed of roses. They are thorns. <laughs> but sure. there is also sweet fragrance, which is the love of God. You know, a flower has got thorns. It has got flowers and some sweet aromatic fragrance from the flower. Yeah. So love has got thorns, the burdens, and it has also fragrance and it has flowers. 
So a relation so important as marriage and so far reaching in its results should not be entered upon hastily without sufficient preparation and before the mental and physical powers are well developed. So you cannot tell me a young boy of 13 years or 14, 16 is physically well developed to make a serious decision like marriage. So marriage is not for children. It's for adults who have completed their professional training in campus and they are now able to use their hands to wash cars in narrow to of empty pocketing you are a small boy going to your mother to feed you <laughs> now another thing brethren for more information i want you to read adventist home page 46 all the way to 47 about qualities to be sought in a prospective husband and wife i cannot put them on the screen but go home and read Adventist home, the whole chapter, but page 46 onward, you can see a lot of things. Uh, our, our, our grand, our, 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 our sister LNG White put a lot of information there. Now, what is the predicament of our youths? The Bible says, I have written to you, young men, because you are strong, strong. and the word of God abideth in you, and you have overcome the wicked one. But now, are we using that strength for the glory of God or we are misusing the strength to destroy our lives? You know, young men, you are very strong. Now, uh, Rogers, can you read uh, Proverbs 31, verse 1 to 3 on the screen? The words of King Lemuel. It's uh, 31 from 1 to 3 in the screen says, The words of King Lemuel, the prophecy that his mother taught him. What, my son? Mm -hmm. And what, the son of my womb? And what, the son of my vows? Give not thy strength unto women, nor thy ways to that which destroyeth kings. So, you see what? Give not thy strength unto women, but preserve it for your woman, the wife. Sure. If, you give it, if you give all your strength in Narok to every woman who is walking from the beautiful gate, <laughs> when you walk outside the gate, you see a, a lady selling uh, roasted maize. You give your strength. You go to car wash, you give your strength. You go to Midrock, your strength. You go to seasons, your strength. You go to Chambai, your strength. By the time you are at my Mayu, your strength is finished. You are a shell. You are a scrap. Keep it. You know why you should keep your strength? Your wife is looking forward to you. I will not talk much about how you to use that strength, but uh, one day when you will be married, you will be planning to marry, you can seek counseling. I tell you how to preserve the strength, even how to eat well so that the strength is preserved. The strength of a man is around the waist, not on the arms. Of course, we have some strength on the arms to carry stones. But the strength we are talking here is the strength about around your loins. Now, what does Lamentation 3.27 say? It is good for a man that he bear the yoke in his youth. Exactly. Now, what you, what you do today will determine your destiny. You will either become an example or a lesson. First Timothy 4.12. Now, what is the AB of sexual purity? Abstain, be, be faithful. Now, there is, there is something the world has added. C, C, we were told in school, A for apple, B oh, for boy, and C for cow. But they have kind of said C for condom. No, for us, we are, we are stopping at A, B. Abstain and be faithful. But the Bible says what in Ecclesiastes 11 verse 9. Rejoice, O young man, in thy youth, and let thy heart cheer thee in the days of thy youth and walk in the ways of thine heart and in the sight of thine eyes but now that is where i want you to underline but know thou that for all these things god will bring thee into judgment so you can enjoy your life eh? you can say i don't want to listen to the bible i want to i don't want to listen to sop i don't want to listen to pastor or what the word says or the counsel from brethren i want to enjoy my life you enjoy my brother but you will surely die. <laughs> sure. Take care, brother. <laughs> now, there's this SI. I'm not talking about SI unit, about sexual immorality. Now, all scriptures expressly shows that God is concerned with how we take care of our bodies, how we eat, how we dress, how we sanitize. I thank God for COVID-19. It has helped us to, to learn about sanitation, cleanliness, washing hands. You know, sure. some men don't bathe. 
<laughs> Sisters are supposed to bed three, twice in a day, but some men can take three days sweating and reabsorbing the sweat. You are not clean, brother. You need to wash and clean yourself. The last part is how to relate to the opposite sex. Read for me 1 Corinthians 7, 1 to 3. 1 Corinthians 7, 1 to 3. The book is 1 Corinthians chapter 7. If I start from 1, the Bible says, Now concerning the things of which you wrote to me, it is good for a man not to touch a woman. Nevertheless, because of sexual immorality, let each man have his own wife, and let each woman have her own husband. 3. Let the husband render to his wife the affection due her, and likewise also the wife to her husband. You know, you have you been told not to touch a woman. But because now, this problem of sexual immorality is there, please, you need to have your own. Look, it says, your own wife. For example, you have your own phone. That phone is yours. It is yours. To warm you, your phone is supposed to serve you. Now, that woman, that wife should be yours alone. And the woman should have her own husband because of sexual immorality. Now, down there, go back to chapter 6, verse 18 and 19. What are we told? What is Paul telling young people? 1 Corinthians 6, 18 and 19. 1 Corinthians 6, 18 and 19 says, Flee sexual immorality. Every sin that a man does is outside the body, but he who commits sexual immorality sins against his own body. 19. Or do you not know that your body is the temple of the Holy Spirit who is in you, whom you have from God, and you are not your own? Thank you. The first statement is flee fornication. It, does, it doesn't say do some walking race. It's not about walking race, my friend. <laughs> it is not flee. even a hundred meters. It is flee. Sure. If you want to know one man who fled in the Bible, it's co he's called Joseph. Sure. The woman, Mrs. Potiphar, used to tell him, please lie with me. Oh, lie with me. Genesis 39 was uh, nine there. But the man had to flee and he left his leather jacket. You know, you can even leave your education because somebody is threatening that if you don't give me, you will fail the ODE. You flee. You better even uh, take study leave or uh, defy your studies because somebody wants to eat you. Sure. Flee! It doesn't say walk or uh, run. It says flee. If you remove double E and put Y, it says fly. <laughs> fly like an eagle from this fornication. Now, what are stolen during courtship? What to avoid in courtship? Those are the things you need to avoid. Sure. Being in a dark place, wearing provocative attire, like revealing the cleavage. I'm talking to all of us. Even us nowadays, men, we are, we are revealing the chest that is flat. I don't know what we are trying to show the world. <laughs> Re avoid reading and watching those. Uh, about, uh, during this COVID-19, uh, uh, avoid being idle. An idle, they say, an idle mind is the devil's workshop. Okay. Sure. Now, there is another important thing during courtship. Do not trivial with the hearts. To trivial is to show lack of proper respect or seriousness. You are approaching every sister. Every sister. You go to Mamusda, you approach. You go to Bomet University College, you approach. You go to University of Kabianga, you approach. Kisi University, you approach. You go to, I used to have a friend of mine I don't want to mention. Used, one time I sent him to preach in KMTC Mombasa. And the lady who was serving the man uh, was already infatuated. And then the man left there. He went to Machako's TTC. So the lady in Mombasa was telling me, actually, I'm dying for that tall, handsome man. The man forgot that he even trivial with the heart. To trivial with the heart is a crime of no small magnitude in the sight of a holy God. Sure. The last statement says, a new face attracts them. And they repeat the same words. Devote to another the same attention. So you go to UON, you go to Jaikwat, you go to KU, you go to Masidem Liro, Kebabi, Jaramogi, Ramogi. <laughs> you say, Oh, I love you. I love you. I love you. So everywhere you are drawing your 
heart. Your true, by the way, that is a crime, and you'll be held responsible by God. Stealing, thou shalt not steal. Do not steal the affection of that girl. Please, if you are not ready to marry, don't trifle with the heart. Stealing affection. Thou shalt not steal was written by the finger of God upon the tables of stone. Yet how much understand stealing of affection is practiced and excused. Messages to young people, 446, paragraph 1. So let us not steal. I know you. when they are singing in front, you see the flowers and you admire. Please, don't double deal. Imagine you are double dealing or triple dealing. Imagine, you have seven. You remember that lady in John chapter 4 who had five? Jesus told her, even the sixth one is not yours. That woman was keep was was also stealing affections. Happy Sabbath, brethren. Happy day. Amen. Now, what about our women in this age? Read for me the first statement. Letters to Young Lovers 74.3 says, the women in this age both married and unmarried, too frequently do not maintain the reserve that is necessary. They encourage the attentions of single and married men, and those who are weak in moral power will be ensnared. Thoughts are awakened mm -hmm. that would not have been if a woman had kept her place in all modesty and sobriety. Let us to Young Lovers 74.8. Now, the, the second paragraph is, I was even afraid to read it. Women are too often tempters our sisters some of them not all eh? they are tempting us to fall into sin so may we let's keep in fact this corona has also taught, taught us about social distancing so in fact this one we should have applied in church before corona came <laughs> <laughs> now 24,000 men died in a day can you read for me numbers 25 from 6 to 8 uh, you can start 25 verse 1 to 6. Numbers 25 verse 1 to 6. You can read the whole of it. We get the introduction about it. Okay. Numbers 25 from 25 verse 1 to 6. Okay. One. From, from verses 1, the Bible says, Now Israel remained in Acacia Grove, and the people began to commit halosy with the women of Moab. They invited the people to the sacrifices of their gods, and the people ate and bowed down to their gods. So Israel was joined to Baal of Peor, and the anger of the Lord was aroused against Israel. Then the Lord said to Moses, Take all the leaders of the people and hang the offenders before the Lord out in the sun, that the fierce anger of the Lord may turn away from Israel. So Moses said to the judges of Israel, Every one of you kill his men who were joined to Baal of Peor. And indeed, one of the children of Israel came and presented to his brethren a Midianite woman in the sight of Moses and in the sight of all the congregation, the children of Israel, who are weeping at the door of the tabernacle of meeting. Thank you. Imagine a young man. The whole congregation is mourning for the death of 24,000 men. Zimri bringing a lady called Cosby into the tent before Moses. If you read, it says before Mo in the sight of Moses and in the sight of all the congregation of the children of Israel. Who are weeping before the door of the tabernacle of the congregation. But one man called Phineas, when he saw what was happening in verse 7, and when Phineas, the son of Eliezer, the son of Haron, the priest, saw it, he rose up from among the congregation and took a javelin in the hand, and he went after the man of Israel into the tent and thrust both of them through. The man of Israel and the woman drew her belly, so the plague was stayed from the children of Israel. That abomination was silenced by Phineas. It took one man, Ezekiel 22, that says, and the, and the Lord says, I sought for one man who will stand in the gap in their midst so that I may not destroy the land. But I found none. Let us be found among the men who will stand in the gap and say no to pornography, immorality, and lust. It's killing us. I think uh, what is on the screen has, is more emphasis on what I've said. Dangers of varsity, freedom. There is too much freedom. You know, when we were in primary and high school and at home, there was some uh, there was some restriction from parents. But when you go to the university, the word university, I, I, I think it is universal. You meet everybody from the world. And there is too much freedom. We have 
bash, we have whatever, name them. Eh? Sure. Uh, nights, we go and dance, we go and, and do a lot of sort of things. We go to carnival, but may the Lord protect us. Amen. Let's be like Daniel, Mishael, Anania, and Azaria in the land of Babylon. They were together always praying and studying. And even when they were, their, their friends were ba going for bash, I'm sure they used to go to the house and pray. And that's why they stood in the land of Babylon up to the point of Daniel becoming one of the presidents. And his brethren were also some top officers. So, but that freedom, let's not misuse it in campus. Eh? Amen. Now, why do young people commit fornication? Lack of education on the information on the when? Sorry, sorry. So, lack of education and information on when and why from parents and church. Also, peer pressure from immoral friends. You can see how they are dressed. You can see, in fact, that screen should not take long on the wall. Media pornography and immoral literature. You, uh, you get a lot of, lot of things. In fact, when you read there, a Brazilian woman auctioned her virginity for 780,000 US dollars. It was on YouTube. Down there, eight women who auctioned off their virginity. Brazilian woman's virginity sold at auction for 780,000 US dollars. How do you go selling that precious thing? You're supposed to preserve it, by the way, for the man. So that woman of Brazil was selling it. And now, can you read the last paragraph? Every youth. Every youth who habitually attends such exhibitions will be corrupted in principle. There is no influence in our land more powerful to poison the imagination, to destroy religious impressions, and to blunt the relish for the tranquil, precious, and sober realities of life than theatrical amusements. Yeah, theatrical amusement. People go to carnival, they go to church in life, they go to so many things. Actually, the spirit of prophecy says the theater, the hotbed of immorality. We listen to classic and you see, you listen, Hata Mimi, I'm cheating with my wife like this. This one. Hata Mimi, I'm cheating with my wife. This is from classic manual. In the morning when our children are going to school, ha, this man doesn't give me enough, so I have to go out there. Imagine Mimi Nimboj na Mzewa Boma Ananitaka. All this nasty thing. Hey. And then what will be the result? Look at the result. After the poisoning, the phenom of from the radios. Pornography and your mind, the frogs of Egypt. Many of the young are eager for books. They read everything they can obtain. Exciting love stories and impure pictures of a corrupting influence. Photographs of females in a state of nudity are frequently circulated for sale. In the streets, in the saloon, in the dangarines, in the vehicles, all these things are put there. The devil is after arousing the lower and baser passion in young people. Like that Zimri who brought the girl into the tent before Moses. We can say Moses is like Jesus Christ. Imagine bringing a lady before Jesus and the congregation of the seven days. And you say, I don't care about Mamusha. I don't care about mining. Then you take her to your room. My brother, Phineas, will bring a javelin and thrust it from your back through the belly of the woman and the plague will cease in Mamusda. Sure. Salacious novel and pornography, all those things. In the cars, photographs of females in a state of nudity are frequently circulated for sale. So we need to avoid all those nasty things. Eh? Number four is wrong information on sex, such as sex as a cure of certain illness. At, if your waist is uh, disturbing you, you go and do those things. That's a lie. And the devil is a liar. John 8, 44. Are you seeing, are you seeing that thing? Yes. Brethren, is it, is it, is it moving? Is it? Yeah, yeah, it is. We are watching it. Look at that young man. Are you seeing the young man? Yes, 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 sure. Sagging. You know sagging uh, the problem. Mm.
So you have seen the young man, eh? Sure. Before, I, I guess that is the mother. The young man is just showing everything to the world because he copied it from some, some friends, some peers, people encouraging errors, rudeness, and stupidity. Sure. Uh, the dressing code is a big issue in campus. You can see the, that thing, that revealing of the breast is not right. That is sure. for immoral people. True. Look at that, brethren, that is not fair. Our sisters, I wish they were here to see all this. You're seated in church, but the thighs are revealed. It is wrong. Look at those clothes. They are not right. Can you read what the madman is saying there? Well, oh. This means <laughs> now I am fashionable too. <laughs> He's comparing his attire and the attire of the sisters. <laughs> they are the same. It's, it's unfortunate, brethren. They are the same. Imagine you can look at it. Almost the same. <laughs> He's wondering, oh, so I'm fashionable. People are copying my fashion uh, attire. <laughs> it's unfortunate. It's terrible. But look at that. Read for us, brother. What is on when the screen? A, when a woman veils her body in modesty, she is not hiding herself from men. She is revealing her dignity to them. Amen. Amen. That is it, man. Look at that. When you, are, when you look at such a sister and you are not yet married, you will even be compelled and convicted. I'm sure Eliezer, when he was sitting and the girls were coming to fetch water, he looked at them and saw how Rebecca was dressed. He was, she was courteous. And she said, oh, sister, help, give me some water to drink. And she was willing to fetch for the 10 camels. And by the way, one camel can drink 113 liters. So she was able to fetch 1,113 1, liters. I'm sure Eliezer looked at how she was dressed, how she was uh, c c conducting herself while waiting to fetch water. But uh, if you saw one who is revealing the breast, you can't go for that. Sure. So lack of the information of the consequence, you can see the consequence. Uh, recently, the statistics were released that uh, so many schoolgirls have conceived in, sure. because of SI. So we need to... So illicit relationships, like Samson, he went to Timna. Instead of uh, listening to God, he went. And he never even started with the prayer. It's only that when he had messed, it's, he's praying at the last minute, Judges 16, 28. Now, if you are dating a donkey, it's better to break the engagement than break a marriage. Sure. Dating unbelievers, we need to avoid You know, unbelievers will tell you, let's have it. You know, they don't have a restriction like this one of COVID. They tell you, just bring the free fruit to eat. But if the brother is truly born again, he will tell you, let's wait. Here is the patience of the saints. Here are they who keep the commandments of God and the faith of Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Now, what are the consequences of this fornication? You can see them on the screen. I cannot. I'll share this one later. There are so many consequences. So many of them. Now, what is the way out? Be not deceived, evil companion, corrupt, good morals. Take first hold of instruction, let her not go, keep her, for she is thy life. To everything there is a season and a time to a purpose under the heaven. For bodily exercise profiteth little, but godliness is profitable unto all things. I can do all things through Christ, which is which strengthen me. But if we have committed sexual immorality, if we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. God bless you. Amen. Let's pray.